From the Oklahoma Video Studio, I'm Dave Morris. This afternoon, uh, President Barack Obama announced his nomination to succeed Antonin Scalia on the U.S. Supreme Court. It's Merrick Garland. He is currently Chief Judge, U.S. District Court of Appeals, D.C. Circuit, and a name familiar to Oklahomans. Joining us once again from Skype, from our studio in Washington, D.C., Carrie Watkins, Executive Director of the Oklahoma City National Memorial. Carrie, again, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, of course, you know Ger Mer Merrick Garland quite well. He spent time and lived in Oklahoma City for quite a while back in the mid-90s following the Oklahoma City bombing memorial. And I guess my question to you, what can you tell us about Merrick Garland, the man? Well, I think Merrick's a very fair man that understands process and believes in the process of fairness and openness and building trust. And I think one of the stories that stands out to me is when he was flown by the FBI plane to... Uh, come to Oklahoma City on that Friday after the bombing. Uh, he would be one of the first to do a preliminary hearing for McVeigh at Tinker out in the JAG courtroom. And when he got it there, he realized there was no media present. And one of the things he felt that was important was to bring the media in. And the FBI then said, well, we're on an Air Force base. And he said, exactly, and you're the FBI, so you guys go work it out. And we'll hold this hearing when we have some representation of the media. And so as he reflected on that story, I've heard that story from both media and from Merrick, and I heard him tell that story to my, my teenage daughter on Sunday just as one of the important lessons he had learned through this process is to always be a consensus builder and to build trust. And I think that's, you know, that's, he was someone we could trust in this process. He was one of the lead uh, folks from Justice with Jamie Gorillick and, and the team that put the, both the prosecution and the defense together. He believed in uh, making sure that McVeigh had the best attorneys the best team possible and that Nichols had the best team possible so that in the end there would be no reason that the, the, the case would not stand up both to the jury and to the appeals process and I think you know we've seen that that, that worked and his approach really worked well. We're talking with uh, Kerry Watkins executive director of the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Kerry you bring up a good point throughout that trial he made sure even though documents were being volunteered from a rider truck or whoever he made sure they had a subpoena that things were being done by the book thinking ahead uh, down the road so that cases wouldn't be disrupted in some manner. How was he to work with? Well, I, I've only come to know him in the last decade or so when we began to put the story together for the museum. But when we began to look at the prosecution and the defense, both folks said one of the key people you have to go talk to is Merrick Garland. And so we called him to set up his oral history and to talk to him about it. He was a little shy about doing it. And we began to explain why this, why telling this story was so critical to kind of telling the big picture of the of the justice in in the museum and so he readily agreed we went to his office one friday afternoon i don't know five years ago or so and began to talk to him about his memories of this case and as he began to reflect on both his work in the with the family members and the prosecution and the defense and the internal workings of the justice department and with the press and why all that was important how why it was critical to take the case from Oklahoma City to Denver. I mean, he was critical in that process, and he explained that reasoning. Uh, you know, remember the U.S. attorneys were in a shift of Vicki Miles LaGrange had just been appointed to the bench and federal bench, and so she had left the U.S. attorney's office, and there was an interim attorney, U.S. attorney there, and why it was important to have someone come in who looked at the case from a criminal perspective. And Merrick was the guy that, that Janet Reno and Jamie Gorillick sent in, and, you know, he really, I mean, now we look back two decades, his work has, has lasted, has stood the test of time. You mentioned he was a consensus builder. Was Judge Garland uh, easy to deal with? Well, I think for the families and survivors perspective, they would tell you yes. I think, you know, when they realized that they couldn't sit in the courtroom and listen to the trial and then be um, one of the victim's impact witness, they, they wanted to figure out how they could do that. And he explained that would take a change in the law. And so they went about changing the law through Congress to make sure they could sit in there and witness the trial and then uh, do a victim's impact witness at the end. I think he understood the, both the emotional side and the legal side of this case and how he had to bring those two worlds together. And not to, not to rush to judgment, not to rush to the fact that while babies were killed and moms and dads and uncles and aunts were killed, but we had to make sure that um, we were setting forth to get the fairest trial. And I think he, if you look back at his talks and you look back at his oral history and different things, he talks about why that was so important and it really had to stand through not one, one, not one jury but two and then stand through the, the appeals process and he understands that and I think he really does understand and believe that, um, uh, that it's, it's to do the, he looks at the big picture when he's making decisions. 
You mentioned the oral history that he gave at the museum. He was uh, recognized as well at the Reflections of Hope recently, right? Well, last April, we, you know, we honored both the prosecution and the defense, the justice team that brought, uh, brought the trials to, to both the federal and the state levels. And why that was important was to show that um, justice isn't resolved with just a prosecution. It takes a strong defense to get to, to what we might call justice. You know, McVeigh's family may not have found it to be justice, but I think that's where Merrick Garland is so good, is looking at the big picture. And, you know, when we began to interview the, the teams of the prosecution and the defense, they would talk about what a great job the Justice Department did in putting this piece of the puzzles together and making sure they looked at the whole picture. And, you know, you think back on that, and we thought about this last year on the 20th anniversary. This was the government who had to do this, the very government that McVeigh and Nichols tried to to destroy you know, or tried to have an impact on. It was the very government that had to then stand up and put the right teams together to bring uh, to, to trial these two cases. And I think that that shows his uh, big picture thinking, his fairness, his understanding of, of the, the complexity of this case. And I think it, you know you can look back at his history where he has been appointed by both a Republican and a Democrat. And I think he it really is not about politics. He's about the procedures. We're talking about Merrick Garland, President Obama's choice to succeed Antonin Scania on the uh, U.S. Supreme Court. Kerry, one last question for you. Uh, Merrick Garland, what's he like these days? You caught up with him recently. Yeah, I spent some time with him Sundays. He gave a tour of his courthouse to my kids, and I think, you know, it was fascinating to hear him recount this story. And I think he had been through the vetting process. We had turned documents over for the, vet the White House vetters to, to look at, and... Um, I think he was, looking back on it, he was extremely relaxed on Sunday, so either he knew it or was relaxed to know that he, the one question I asked on the way out, are you ready to stand, you know, to stand the, the, the test? And he said, I am. You know, I tried both the McVeigh and Nichols case and the Unabomber case. I think I can handle Congress. And um, <laughs> I, I think that was a, a good analogy of understanding where he was and, uh, and where he is. I'm so proud to see him up there today with the president, to hear the president talk about his work in Oklahoma City and um, I think it you know, shows the relevance of the Oklahoma City bombing and that story and where we stand today. And I'm um, very proud of Judge Garland, and we wish him the very best in this nomination process. Judge Garland did say, quote, the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Kerry Watkins, thank you so much for your time today. Good luck with the, uh, the train situation there in Washington, D.C. Be safe getting home. Thanks.